I'm, I'm with the you know Brooklyn Nets right now. A lot of people know that I, I grew up in Indiana, and so it's a struggle to talk to a Kentucky guy to a certain extent. To a certain extent, now not a lot of people may understand this um, because times have certainly changed even back in Indiana. You know my but, son's there, right? You know my son's. Any- no, my son's in Brooklyn with the Nets. Is, did it, oh, I didn't know that. In the, in the that. video room. In the video, in the video room. room. Zeke Chapman. Oh, how, how long he, has he been he, there? He, been... Just, just this year. He and Steve, Steve Nash. Steve was a rookie. <laughs> and when my son was three or four years old, they've been big buddies since. How, how shocking has it been for you to see your Twitter page blow up the way it has. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. You know, <laughs> uh, again, these are not my videos. These are other people's videos that people send me. And, you know, I, I asked to amplify them, which I'm like, this is crazy. Cause you know, only seven, eight years ago, I was living in my car for a bit, living on friends' couches and, and whatnot. So, so it, it, it's a bit surreal, especially when people know me more for, for that and this than, them from basketball so yeah. <laughs> do you remember the first video that blew up yeah um I, I was just i wanted off social media i the uh it was a couple years ago toxic political climate it was just getting me down and uh once one day i was, came to a video and it was a school of dolphins swimming into the shore and a guy paddle boarding out standing up one of the dolphins jumped up, hit him in the chest and knocked him off his paddleboard. I said, that's a charge. <laughs> and uh, uh, that was just my reaction. So I tweeted it out. People thought it was funny or whatever. And that's <laughs> it. That's all there is to it. It was a complete oh. accident. Oh my gosh. What are your favorite kind of videos that you'll post? Ah, uh, the feel good stuff, man. The, yeah. the, the heartwarming stuff. You know, the last year has been so terrible for everybody, for everybody. And you know, and we were all isolated. We're all at home watching TV or on our phones. That's all we had to do. You know, <laughs> I said chaos was chaos was really going to happen when the internet went out. If the internet went out, people people would have been in the streets. <laughs> no doubt. Right. No doubt. So we were no all doubt. sitting there, and you know, it was just kind of nice to you know. It was also nice to connect. It's nice to connect with kind of like-minded individuals it seems like on social media you'll recognize a person that's following you maybe and you'll be like man i saw them in a movie oh they kind of we kind of you know there's we kind of you know get along like if we were real life maybe we would be friends you know so there's something real there's something real kind of i don't know comfortable about that you're missing this earlier so many people knowing from you know, the social media, I, I remember I was in Vegas one time and Shaq was DJing, where he's known as DJ Diesel. And uh, I think it was my yeah. fiance overheard some some uh, some young people saying, oh, you know, it was a DJ. And someone said, no, he played basketball. They go, what? <laughs> like they didn't know Shaq hooped. I mean, come on. <laughs> Does it? That's hilarious. That's Does hilarious. It, kinda, is it, I mean, you have that same vibe with so <laughs> many people. You yeah, know, but I'm not no. seven one three hundred. I'm not <laughs> seven one three hundred. Uh, yeah, that's extreme. But yeah, that is weird. I remember I was at the combine, uh, NBA combine, a couple years ago, and uh, um, you know I do basketball stuff still for NBA TV and for Kentucky basketball and and whatnot. And and so I've been watching them play in the SEC all year long. And one of the young men from came out on the floor, came out on the floor. His name is, uh, oh my goodness, played at Tennessee. I'm drawing a blank. Grant, uh, Grant, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, anyway, Grant Williams, Grant Williams. Okay, and so yep. Grant, Grant Grant comes out and uh, he came up to me, saw my name tag and said, Rex Chapman. I said, yay, man, what's up? He said, from Twitter, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's a ball. He's a basketball. Yeah, he's a basketball player. player. <laughs> plays for the Celtics now. Right now, right. he plays for the Celtics. Yeah, <laughs> it was from Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, before I move on, tell me um, this is completely random. Your Twitter uh, uh, photo 
is Prince spinning the basketball. Where it, <laughs> where that's come <laughs> from? Is it, is it the Prince? That's not me. It's not. Is it not? It, it, please tell me that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, no, that's my, that, that's my guy. I've loved oh. him from early on. And then uh, just from early on, from yeah. controversy and everything. I mean, right, I was probably 14. And you couldn't get, you had to go to the record store. And in Kentucky, it wasn't easy to get a Prince album in a record store. But we <laughs> found it. And uh so from that, from that time with the music, but then a couple years later, I was in high school and I was wearing the number three. And the only reason I was wearing three, cause it was one of the two smallest uniforms on the team and everybody, you know, so me and another guy, he got double zero. He was a little bit smaller than me. But then I saw that Prince wore number three when he played basketball. If you've ever seen that picture of Prince kneeling down on his, on his squad from when he was probably 15, I was like, oh, I'll never not wear number three. Because anyway, that's my guy. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Tell me about tell me about your your new podcast, Charging Slings. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of excited about it, uh, uh, and I don't get real excited about too much, but uh, I try <laughs> not to. Um, but um, yeah, Steve Nash, my buddy uh, Stevie Nash, who we were teammates from, gosh. It's, 25 years ago now god that's hard to say out loud is that right wow. <laughs> 25 years yeah so he called me about a year ago and we've been close friends for that long and uh he said hey i got an idea for a, a show a pod some kind of something what you know would you be interested and you know when he laid it out to me i couldn't really understand it because i'm kind of an idiot but when they explained <laughs> it a little bit more um i was like oh man that's that's pretty cool and it's really just um you know, it's become, I'll interview, the first episode was me, you know, being charged, being in trouble, rehab, uh, trouble with the police. Um, you know, I played a career. We, you know, I told about that and then talk about all the hard stuff, all the terrible stuff when it's, you're feeling your worst. And then what you're doing now, you know, I've had the opportunity to interview early on Meta World Peace, Meta Sandra for our test now. Um, and I played against him. So it, it's, and it's kind of cathartic. It's listen for these guys that are being interviewed, did Ryan leaf uh, last week, uh, Chris Heron coming up. It's cathartic. Um, but it's fascinating to me to, you know, ask these, you know, so what was it like right in that moment? You know, cause you, your whole world comes down, you know, when you get charged with something and you, you've grown, kind of grown up in the spotlight, it's horrible. It's a horrible experience, but it's beautiful to watch these guys and these guests open up and you see a side of them that you go, Oh man. Uh, you know, and look, these are people who have messed up and you know, it's not absolving them or us of anything, but it's just saying, Hey, there's a, there's a human here that, you know, you might not understand, maybe going through, may have been going through something, you know, with family or mental illness, depression. At, at a young age, you've got the world by the tail and not all of us, myself definitely included, have the mental capacity or mental makeup at age 22 or age 26 or even age 30 to, to be very worldly and to, to really have I didn't know much about anything my whole playing career. I was just so focused on playing and it, cause it's hard and you're doing it in the public, public eye, but man, it's, it's really beautiful watching, watching these people open up. And cause I, I think it's probably going to be pretty valuable for, for some people to hear. Cause sometimes when you're struggling, you just need to hear something. And these guys are providing some inspiration, I believe. And I, and I, I, I don't think you could really quantify or really put a number on the amount of people that uh, you've already touched and you will eventually touch through sharing oh, your thanks, story, man. sharing the story of so many people. Um, I, I want to encourage everybody to check out, you know, charges, check out that podcast. And that first episode, you, you know, you go in detail about your story. We don't have to go through the whole thing here, but could you give, mm -hmm. could you share um, a little bit about your story and about, you know, you know, your low point and what helped yeah. you 
turn around? Sure. Um, yeah, I, you know, I grew up in born and raised in Kentucky. I was uh, played every sport growing up. I loved every sport, uh, but I, I really liked football uh, a lot, but I was a late bloomer. I was like five, seven, five, eight as a freshman in high school and everybody was way bigger than I was. And I, I and I, I could always play basketball. I was always good at basketball. Uh, my dad was a coach. I, that's really all I ever really wanted to do. Um, but I wasn't, I wasn't athletic and I wasn't big, but he's, he was, he's six, six and my mom's five, eight, five, nine. So everybody assumed I was going to grow, but I was still not growing. <laughs> but over one summer, I grew about three inches and went from, you know, five, eight to six, three or so. But then my athleticism kind of kicked in and I was a really good athlete, became a really good athlete. And, uh, I was recruited by everybody um at mcdonald's all american all that stuff um went to kentucky was there at kentucky for two years was a all sec all uh all american at kentucky pick in the draft uh for the charlotte hornets the first pick in their franchise history uh del curry and i del was a uh the first pick of the expansion draft we became best of friends at that point stephen curry was born my rookie year He's like my little man. Um, and then I was traded from there to, to uh, Washington after four years, played with the Bullets, Washington Bullets back in the day for three and a half, four years. I played, was traded to Miami, played a year in Miami, had a terrific time, and then finished my career last four or five in Phoenix with the Phoenix Sun. Then I retired and within and a doctor right i had three seven surgeries my last three years of playing and i wasn't a smoker wasn't a drinker none of that um you know i'd go out and have a drink with my friends every now and then but i i didn't really like it so but um the doctor right i had an emergency appendectomy and the doctor gave me oxycontin and i still had i still had like three or four years left on my contract 13 million dollars i think roughly and uh, that doctor gave me Oxycontin. And uh, in two days, I felt like I was in love. And I never played another basketball game, not another one. Um, I retired and spent, you know, there was a time I was taking, within 18 months of that retirement, I was taking 40, 50 Vicodin a day and 10 Oxycontin a day. And wow. Yeah, so uh, I went to rehab. Danny Ainge convinced me to go to rehab. I went to rehab. Um, I, I got off the Oxycontin, but for the next 12, 13 years, I battled a, a painkiller addiction and was in rehab three times. I got in trouble uh, in 2014, uh, shoplifting in an Apple store. And when I say that out loud, every time I want to crawl under this table, every time. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's crushing. It's crushing to me. It's crushing to, you know, just, you know, my family, my kids, you know, it's, it's hard anyway. So, uh, I got in trouble and then I uh, went to rehab that time, took it seriously. I'm 30 or I'm 40, whatever, five at the time. And, um, you know, really took the therapy part of it seriously. Uh, I stayed in rehab for a, a month or so, and then I went and lived in Houston with John Lucas, who's renowned, and we've been friends forever, and John has a long history. Uh, everybody should know John Lucas' story if you don't look him up. But, um, and he really helped me get, get, you know, right. I was out there helping, you know, basketball, just out there on the floor, helping young kids, just back in a gym. And slowly but surely, you know, my, I started to develop, developing new habits and uh, lived on friend's couch in LA for a couple of years, a couple of friends, and then, uh, started getting back into basketball. People asked me to, uh, you know, I, I did Kentucky basketball radio for a couple of years and I've done NBA TV. Turner sports has been very, very good to me. I do that. And I do these pods, but, uh, that's, that's really it in a nutshell. I, I hope I didn't take too long. No, no, no. That's, that's perfect. Cause I, you know, some of the people, it, it frustrates me sometimes when I hear people, you know, crack jokes about different people in history, yeah. alive or dead or whatever it may be, because uh, I appreciate and admire, you know, the redemption stories. And 
is it is it frustrating? I mean, obviously you you know you have to stay you know on your path and focus on what you want to focus on, but I'm sure you're confronted with that that people that some people are more in love with the fall from grace than they are the redemption story. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and I I think that's just people. Um, you know, I could post I could post anything really. I could post um, a fireman up in a tree saving uh, a kid. And inevitably, in the comments, somebody's gonna put my mugshot up there and say, "Is this you, bro?" Well, yeah, that's me. But that's just—I mean, it's—it's it's mean, but right? It's just mean. That's what it is. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, but you—that's social media too. But it's all—you <laughs> you realize that you—you you just realize at some point, all you can do is continue to try to get better there are some people that are never gonna never gonna get over some things and I, I can't help them i can't help them all i can do is continue to do better and we've we've seen this you mentioned you know during the, the you know the pandemic and a lot of people on their phones and the way things have been over the course of the last handful of years a lot of people you know came out the woodwork and showed uh, yeah. their ugliness for sure uh, what what what's motivated you because you, you you have the you know the videos that, that put a smile on people's face make people laugh the uplifting videos timeline cleansers um but you use your your, your voice um uh for for social justice too um what was the catalyst of that you know how did how where did that come about yeah uh you know i've 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 been fortunate to I've been fortunate to play basketball, you know, and if you look around, look around the league, black and white, it's a very difficult sport to be racist in. It really is. Uh, I mean, you better learn about uh, the people in your locker room if you want to know anything. If you want to have a chance of being a good teammate, you better know. You better not know, not just know them. You better know their family and their history and all of that if you don't you're a bad teammate and so you know when you see people like steve kerr and, and greg popovich and those are good teammates and sadly sadly it's powerful when white people speak up that have a platform i i, I wish that weren't the case but it is and so i would feel I, you know i've seen a lot a lot of stuff growing up in the south and uh, I would feel like a coward to not stand up for my friends and and what I know to be true. I really would. I'm a, I want to hit you with some basketball questions uh, before okay. I do. What what to put a ball in this conversation? What gets you going? What keeps you moving and motivated on a day to day basis? that that's really good it, it's my it's my kids and trying to show them better because i lived i lived my whole life up to the moment that i got in trouble i had never been in trouble like i lived a really and that that really i i, I live with it and it crushes me it crushes me man to know that i did that i that i was capable of, of doing that and so my kids just keep me going you know I, they're older now all of them in their 20s uh they're great but that does because I, I, my whole life, I've had a tendency to kind of, you know, I reach a, something, I reach a level and get complacent and kind of, but maybe the best thing, I, I'm sure it is the best thing to happen to me was getting in trouble or, or cause I was going to die. I was taking so many painkillers. Uh, I wouldn't have picked for that to happen, but it did. And now that it has, it's my story. And you know, you, you can only do two things. You can either try or not try. And I'm trying. And, and you know, that, that, that's all I can do. The Indiana-Kentucky rivalry, and not even talking about college basketball, but from high school, the All-Stars used to be oh, yeah. a big deal. And a lot of people don't realize that. And you obviously a baller, Mr. you know, Mr. Basketball in Kentucky. And uh, unfortunately for me, beat up on Indiana in uh, that two games, <laughs> two game series. Yeah, do you remember that? No, you, I was, I was, I, I was young, but I grew up. I'll and, tell you, I'll tell and, you, because it's a good, good one for me. Uh, <laughs> no, that series used to be the thing. 
Like it was a yeah. big deal. It, they, they packed it at Market Square Arena is where yes. it was for Indiana. And they packed it at Freedom Hall in Louisville. They alternated year. No, they alternated games because you played two yep. games ever right. within two weeks. Yes. In 1986, that's the last time, our year, the last time Kentucky swept Indiana. It's never <laughs> happened since then. But I'll tell you, it was me, but we had, we had, we had 12 for real legitimate division one players. Felton Spencer was on the team too. Yes. R Reggie, Han Reggie Hanson. Uh, we, we had a squad, but I remember that the first game, cause I got like, I don't know, 36 or something. And, <laughs> and, and we, we just beat the pants off of them in Indiana, but it was the first game ever. Cause I was like, I looked at the stat sheet after the game. I was like, this can't be right. It was the first game that I'd ever played that any of us had ever played with the three pointer. And I had like eight three pointers. So, and Ooh. I didn't know, but I didn't even, I, I was just shooting cause they weren't guarding me. It was, you know, it was, yeah, I'll shoot it here. So that was a big advantage, the three point line. Yeah, because <laughs> you're already shooting from there. I mean, yeah, already, yeah. Even before, right? <laughs> now in the in the NBA for sure, and I think I I think I tweeted this anytime that anytime it pops up on your Twitter, um, on your feed, I'll I'll reply and we'll say this: the three pointer that you hit with the Suns and that just off one yeah. leg flinging it. I cannot tell you how many times I practiced that shot in the driveway. Like it was. Man, that's, <laughs> so, that's so awesome. What was that? What was that? That's moment awesome like? to hear. No, it's awesome to hear because the people say it. The people have been saying that for years, and I don't. I don't discount it. it it's <laughs> awesome. But I will. The other. What I'll say is, it was the pass made the shot. That pass by Jason Kidd. The funny part to me is, you know, knowing them as teammates. The play, we'd run that play a couple times during the year, only because I could shoot that way. I could shoot run, the runner. It was just, I don't know why. But, and I don't know if we'd made the shot during the season, but we'd run the play and knew that we could get a look. The play is, it was initially for me to set a pick on KJ, and he was the first option. But if you ever watched the play, Jason never even looked at KJ. He was throwing that thing to me from the get go. Never even looked at him. And I, I almost stopped midway through because I thought he was going to throw it to KJ. And then I had to catch up to it because I thought it was going out of bounds. And we're not even going to get a shot off. So I just caught it. And really in that moment, we, I, I had been shooting the ball really well. They were going to foul us. And we were down three. So I knew if I caught it in and cleanly, Hersey was going to foul me. But right when I caught it, I felt him kind of nudge me with his hand. And I thought, oh, if they call that and I let this go, they didn't call the foul. <laughs> but if they had, ooh, we, man, that could have been a four and ended it right there. <laughs> but, the, but the pass, the pass was just heavenly. I could catch it. Didn't even have to put it down right in stride. Jason oh, Kidd, man. Yeah. Oh, oh, we would practice that whole sequence live <laughs> and let it bounce once and then catch awesome. it. Uh, before, awesome. before we wrap, you're, you're, uh, you, you mentioned him a couple of times that his son, just that relationship with Steve Nash and the job that you feel that he's done, because that's not an easy, people felt like, you know, oh, he's coaching Kevin Durant and Kyrie and now James. That's, that's an easy, that's the easiest job in the league. Uh, what you say about what he's done. Oh man, you know, cause I kind of live and diet. My son's calling me every night, you know, after <laughs> games and up late and all that. And I watch all the games. So they haven't had their whole team together, but what, like seven games all year. I mean, those three guys along with a yeah. healthy compliment of, yep. you know, Joe Harris and, and Claxton and all those guys, it's just been, and then Deion, uh, uh, LaMarcus came in and they, it's just been a crazy year, but they've gotten, you know, from Blake, steadiness and, you know, guys have really stepped up. So if if they're healthy, um, you know, I, watching Steve, I, it's great. And also that Mike is there uh, is yeah. a, a terrific, uh, just a, a really, because they're really tight and they trust one another. Um, I think probably, you know, watching at, at times, knowing Steve and how 
competitive he is. Uh, I watch and I'm like, man, he's letting them go. Okay. Well, he, <laughs> wow. And so I imagine a lot of Steve's job is just on what to let go and not complain about. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but man, if they, if they're healthy, if they're healthy, I think they come out of the East. They are going to be absolutely, absolutely tough. So uh, the world of Rex Chapman, very busy. What's, what is the uh, what is the future? What's the outlook look like? I know Charge is going to continue to blow up the podcast. <laughs> I, I really, I'm having fun. I, I'm really, uh, it's it's great to to be you know through the things that I've been through and be relevant, man. I'm I'm happy to uh, you know be getting up every day and really really happy. Honestly, when you're on those painkillers for that long, uh, you know you never think you're gonna get. You never think you can get off of them. Um, and that your life is never going to be really worth much because it's a really sad and bad existence being a slave to those pills. You know, it's just you, they tell you when to take them at some point instead of the other way around. And just the constant hunt for that to wake up every day and not have to, you know, go to the pharmacy and go, you know, to the guy on the corner and do all, you know, all of that stuff. And it's it's. It's fantastic, and I never thought I'd get out of it. So I'm, I'm good doing this, and uh, we'll see what happens from here on. <laughs> An inspiration, my bad. Thank you so much for your time, Rex. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Anytime.